Today's video, we are inside. We are harvesting honey. Uh, we basically, our hives absconded because the queen ran out of room. We did not realize that uh, hives could become honey bound in the winter time. Um, so we are here now harvesting our honey from our hives. So we just purchased this super deal. That's what the brand or the, the titling was on Amazon and it was only $110. It's a pretty decent sized uh, <clears throat> honey spinner and there's a few flaws, there's a crack, um, there's some welding issues, but for the most part it looks pretty good. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and give you our entire thoughts on the honey spinner because we're gonna start using it now. We also did purchase a heated knife and a sharp beekeeping knife. I'll show you guys that too. We got this guy. And then we also have uh, this like comb pick which helps open up and express some of the comb if you can't use the other two tools. So we're going to go ahead and get started now because we've got quite a lot of honey to harvest. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just go over the few flaws on the spinner really quickly just to kind of show you guys what we're looking at. So this is the honey spinner right here. We, like I said, we purchased it off Amazon. I will link the exact link for this honey spinner down below. Um, so it's pretty, it's not bad, honestly. The tub itself is well made, it looks like. I don't see any holes or flaws as of now. The spinner inside looks pretty legit. The top little plexiglass um, lids there this one did come cracked and I am talking to the company right now to get that replaced and then another part of it it's actually this leg right here was not properly welded right here so two flaws we can see off the bat um, I'm sure there might be another one when we start using it but for hundred and ten dollars you really can't complain it's so far is pretty good quality so we will let you know how it actually performs once we get some some frames in there. We did wash out the entire thing with soap and water, scrubbed it down pretty good uh, just to remove any oils or anything during the manufacturing process. We're going to go ahead and get started now. One other thing I wanted to mention is that um, a lot of these parts have very sharp edges. So the basket, um, the inside where some of these legs are welded, the bottom of the legs, the corners of the legs, everything's very sharp. So if you do get this model, be very cautious when you're cleaning and using it. And uh, if, you, if you absolutely need to, if you've got kids that are helping you, maybe get a little bit of a sander and sand down some of those parts. Okay, so we have our two first frames in there. And we, we were not able to use the knife, the hot knife, for really either one of them a ton um, because how the comb was super recessed. So we just used this pick here mostly, and it worked really good. So now we're going to go ahead and start spinning. all the honey clinging across on the sidewalls.
beautiful. And get it to focus down there. Can't. Oh, there I did. Got it. Wow. All right, so we just got done with. Oh, we're not even really officially done with it. We're almost done with our first box. We've got our last two frames here. These are really, really full. And our. Uh, tub is almost empty with honey we have a little bit left but we decided to stop here and then our bucket is over here we've got a bunch of beautiful honey at the bottom and we've just got some honey straining up here at the top so so far um, I don't really have any complaints about the extractor it seems to be working really well the only thing is, is it is very wobbly, just like all of the reviews said. Um, so what me and Kyle are doing is I'm holding one side and kind of just keeping it sturdy with my legs and my arms. And he's, you know, pretty much doing the same on his side with the drill. And we did decide to do the drill because, I mean, you can do it with your arms and there's really no problem doing that. It just, it really will tie your arms out if you've got a lot to extract. So... We decided to do the um, the drill so that we obviously can go a lot longer. So now we're going to get started again. But again, so far, everything's working good. The spout works really, really well. Uh, so no major complaints so far. One thing that we want to mention is that this little screw right here, right underneath the mechanism right here, you can actually loosen it up and it allows that uh, rod in the middle to drop down lower and the reason why we need to do that is because in here if you look the little spot where this rod fits into the bolt at the bottom so it can spin it kept f uh, flying out of that so we needed to make it a little bit longer so that it wouldn't keep doing that so just a little tip for you guys Another little thing that we noticed is that the legs just aren't really tall enough to get a bucket underneath there. Maybe honey buckets are smaller than five gallon buckets, but I thought that they're just five gallon buckets with a spout on the end. Um, but essentially the legs just aren't tall enough. So we stacked two five gallon buckets on top of each other and put the honey spinner on top of that just while we're extracting, not while we're spinning. And then Kyle's leaning it forward like this into the sieve, which is sitting on top of our clean bucket. And right now, as you guys can see, we are like almost halfway through a five gallon bucket. And the sieve is so full on the, the bottom one. And then the strainer or the spinner is still really full too. And then we still have another like six frames to go so we have quite a bit of honey and then I've got all the honey too that I have to melt out of all the wax that gets stuck up here and then I've got more comb that broke apart and we couldn't spin it so I've got to crush that too so we've got a bunch of honey I can't wait to see how much we end with I'll show you guys okay so the honey and the wax mixture I well I strain the honey out and then what was left in the container, I remelted, and then I filtered it just now to get all of those impurities out of the wax. And now it is melting again so that I can solidify it and then kind of separate the wax from all the other impurities and any honey. And I'll have, have my own little uh, homemade wax from my honeycomb. Pretty excited about that. I just took this pan out of the oven and you can see already the honey is down here at the bottom and then the wax is here at the top. So once it cools and solidifies, I will remove the wax from the top and kind of just um, take off as much honey I can and then I'll rinse off the wax and then I'll have the wax separated 
And then the honey I'll put in a jar. Um, since it has been cooked down so much, I don't want to put this in with the rest of my honey just because this is technically been pasteurized in a sense it really never got to boiling point but um, because it did get so hot a lot of those enzymes did die off so I just don't want to mix it with the rest of my honey so I'll put this in a separate jar and um, that's basically it for separating the wax from the honey and I still have a you know a couple more to do this is not the the end of it but this is just the first little batch all right, so now the wax is cooled enough to remove from the honey, so I'm just using this fondue skewer to kind of lift the wax up. I've already done this piece right here where I've lifted it up and I've washed it off with water, getting the honey off of it, and just set it down on this parchment paper. And then I'm gonna do the rest of this um, little piece right here. Just scraping the honey off of the back side of these pieces to get as much of the honey as possible. Now I've got these more purified pieces. The lighting's awful right now, but I've got these more purified pieces of honey or of a. Uh, wax and then the bottom side I do have some still some like propolis and stuff that's on the back side that I can scrape off um, here at, in a little bit. Just have this one last piece. Alright so now I've got my separated honey that's all inside of here and no more wax cappings mixed up in there. So essentially this was what I scraped off the front of the combs to release the honey. All of that white wax cappings was all mashed up inside of the honey. And so what I did was I just put all of that together in the pot, melted that down. Then I uh, put it through a sieve into here. Then I let it cool, remelted it, had the, um, wax come to the top and then that's when I separated it. So it was quite a few different step process to get to this point, um, but it's well worth it because now I've got not only um, filtered wax that will be great for lotions, candles, things like that, um, but I also have this recycled honey which I can put in a separate jar and use for cooking and things like that where I don't need those enzymes from the honey. And there is that honey right there. It's amazing how a half of an inch in this pan can equal to an entire uh, pint of honey. So try to utilize every little bit of honey you have. Don't throw any away if you don't have to. So now I'll show you my little wax pucks that I have. I have these guys here. I'm gonna go underneath water and really just work these little granulars out there we are at our final drain it is like the fullest it's ever been it's full all the way down to the middle bolt and she's coming out and looking beautiful nice and golden honey up here is very light compared to the honey that we got from when we used to live down in the city because when we lived in the city, it's actually a very um, rural area and it had lots of orchards and stuff. So different type of pollinators up here and down there. It kind of looks like... All right, so we just removed that top piece right there uh, where the where the gearbox was at. Uh, we pulled that out by just removing the four bolts that were on each side. 
And now I'm just going to use a spatula to um, just basically move all the honey towards the front where the spout is at. I'm not going to scrape down any of the sides, I don't think, because it's just sticky. There's really not a lot on the sides. It's gone all the way down to the bottom. So just need to scrape down the bottom, and then we're going to take it outside and wash it. Just got done straining our last bit of the strained honey wax mixture. And we're letting it cool now so that we can take the wax off the top and, and then put the honey in a jar and use it for cooking and then use the wax for probably making homemade candles. Thank you, honey. Thank you, honey. Turning up really easy. Cleaned up like so perfectly. All of the wax and honey just sprayed right out. So this is where we landed as far as harvest goes. We did give away two of these size um, to my sister and my grandma and then another one to my dad and then two other small ones like this to my dad too so we are missing a little bit and also we did have quite a bit of cooking honey which is right here which is going to fill up at least one of those large size mason jars and all we got a pretty large harvest from those two hives and that spinner was so worth a hundred dollars because we wouldn't have been able to harvest all of this as quick as we did without it. So definitely worth $100. Definitely had some issues with it, but they were just pretty minor issues. So everything looks pretty good. This is how much honey ended up coming out of that um, Pyrex dish. So this and then that other mason jar are all of the um, honey we're going to use for cooking since it was technically been slightly pasteurized since we heated it into the oven and separated it from all of the wax and stuff but it still tastes wonderful um, and it's great for cooking purposes so much honey am i right never in my wildest dreams did i ever imagine that we could harvest that much honey off of two traditional hives i'm blown away and I am just very very thankful and blessed we are very very bummed that our bees left us but we are excited that we get to start again this year we're gonna have three hives this time and we're just gonna learn from our mistakes and that's just how it goes with beekeeping you just keep going and you learn from your mistakes and you try again the next year also um, I do want to talk about a little bit about the honey extractor itself so it was $110 on Amazon and you guys, it was so worth it. Like it does have its issues. Like that one welding part that I showed you um, where the leg isn't welded on all the way. It does have a crack on the lid, but honestly we spun the entire thing without the lids on because the lids kept kind of like 
falling in and then getting caught on the spinning and then like stopping the spinner and almost breaking. So we were just like, screw these lids. We don't even need them. And it was hard to see if the honey was still spinning out of the frames with the lids on. So I don't really recommend the lids anyways. I was gonna get them to send me a replacement one, but then once we were done extracting and I realized we never even used the lids, I was like, screw it. I'm not even gonna bother them to send me a replacement because I don't even need it. The extractor though is, is wonderful, honestly, so worth the $100. I mean, it's not the best one I'm sure that you can get on the market, but it's it worked and that's all that we needed it to do. And very inexpensive, which is a win-win, you know. I would say that uh, the wobbling was pretty frustrating, the fact that it just wobbled so much, but you can, I've read tons of reviews where you can fix that by screwing it down into some like two by fours or something in like a triangle shape. I will link down below the honey extractor. It is um, linked into my Amazon lens. So if you do order from it, I do get some commission from it, just so you guys know. Uh, I love to be transparent about that kind of stuff, but I am an Amazon influencer, so any of the links that I ever provide from Amazon, if you do buy from them, I do receive a little bit of commission, but everything that I list on those lists, I pay for with my own money. I do not get sent them from Amazon, so if I'm recommending them to you, it is because I use them and I paid for them with my own money. So. I hope that you guys really, really enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys learned some stuff from it and learned from our mistake, mainly. And um, if you guys have any other questions or anything about the extractor or just about extracting in general, please feel free to leave them down below. I will gladly answer those for you. And uh, if you guys wanna stick around and see more videos, please subscribe. If you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys here pretty soon. Take care.